Hello, good people of God. I trust you are all doing well. I want to use this opportunity to welcome you all to the message where daily we load Christian content for seasoned men of God. Hi, dear. We want to build a community and a family with you. So if you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then like this message for us because we want to build a family together. Do want to always comment in the comment section and share this message abroad. I want you to share on your WhatsApp status. I want you to share on YouTube for us, even on Instagram and all social media platforms. I'll see you again. Be blessed as you listen to this message. What was God's plan in the beginning? How many of you know that God never wanted a king in Israel? How many of you know that? God never wanted a king in Israel. In Exodus chapter 19 verse 5 and 6, Exodus 19, verse 5 and 6. Now, therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. Next verse. And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. This is what Moses said. You should be a kingdom of priests. Everybody a priest. Then look at Revelation chapter 1 verse 5. So you know that has been the plan. Still is God's plan for man. And from Jesus Christ. Who is a faithful witness. And the first begotten of the dead. And the prince of the kings of the earth. Unto him that loved us. And washed us from our sins. In his own blood revelation 5 10 revelation chapter 5 verse 10 and has made us unto our god kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth all of us were a kingdom of kings and we're a kingdom of priests and we shall reign on the earth nobody ruling over another all of us are a kingdom, a corporate identity for the church, kings and priests. And we shall reign on the earth. That was God's plan from the beginning. Now look at First Peter chapter 2, verse 9 to 10. Peter gives credence to that plan of God. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light next verse which in time past were not a people but are now the people of god which have not obtained mercy but now have obtained mercy we are royal priesthood kings and priests we are a priesthood of royalty we are kings and priests unto our god so all believers are kings and priests brother paul equally teaches this but he uses different expressions. Romans 5, 17. Romans chapter 5, verse number 17. For if by one man's offense, death reign by one. Much more, they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign. That word reign in life by one Jesus Christ. The word reign means kings. You shall be a king. It is kings that reign. It is taken from the word dominion and kingdom. Basilia. In Ephesians 1, 21 to 23. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 21 to 23. Pay attention. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion. And every name that is named. Not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And had put all things. Things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church which is his body the fullness of him that filleth all in all this is the kingdom the kingdom of god is sitting in christ sitting in christ it is not an office of a conglomerate or a political position. The kingdom of God is not a political position. Neither is it an office of a conglomerate. 
scriptures always differentiate the two. There's a difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of this world. They are not the same. Because there's a group of, there's a theology that they parade around called seven mountains. That the church must take over entertainment, take over politics, take over government. And that is why the confusion that happened during the election happened. That confusion exposed the church. All these false prophets that paraded themselves all over Nigeria. They started by saying, Tinibu will not win. Tinibu will not be sworn in. Then after they declared him winner, they now say he will not be sworn in. They now say on the day of swearing in, he will be arrested. And Obasanjo has prepared soldiers to take over government. Nonsense. Even their, dig their, their minds is corrupted. And that is why we keep saying, calm down. Let's teach you Bible. You call us heretics. Let ignorance disgrace you before the world. Some churches fasted and prayed for Tinibu to die. The man is your commander in chief. Deal with that. That's how when Buhari entered office, a lot of Christians began to say he will die. They even said when he went to outside the country that he will not come back alive. Christians, churches, that he will die. The man did eight good years and went home younger than when he became president <laughs> to show that the Lord is upright. And there is no unrighteousness in him. God is not a killer. And with these false prophecies, they have destroyed the faith of many people. Because many people fasted and prayed sincerely that Tinibu should die. And their God traveled. So now if you ask them to pray, they are not sure God will answer. They have eroded their faith. They have shipwrecked their faith. Because of lack of understanding that there is a difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of this world. I'm going to teach you scripture. Are you in this building? How many of you remember I told you that this thing, God is not involved. Did I tell you that? It's a contest. It's a competition amongst men. And in a competition, men set the rules. In a competition, men draw the border lines. In a competition, men judge the competition. And in a competition, men announce the winner of the competition. True or false? Anything that a man will set the rule cannot be God. God is not a man. Your elections, the rules are set by men. Your constitution is drawn by men. It's not Bible. It's not God. It's not God. It cannot be God. God does not install presidents. God does not install presidents. Men vote who should rule them. There's a process that is set by men. And men will determine who wins. And men will announce. Didn't you go to school? It is called a democracy. What is a democracy in social studies? Government of the people, for the people, by the people. How did you bring God in? The government of God is a theocracy. You didn't hear what I said. The government of God is a theocracy. That is God's government over his people. There is no theocracy anywhere in the world. It is democracy all over the world. Amer that is why preachers in America kept saying Donald Trump will win and kept saying it. In fact, one woman of God was on television praying, Oh God, oh God, send Afri African angels. Send African angels to come to America and make Donald Trump win. Look at caricature. Disgracing themselves. Disgracing themselves. Men and women of God. Embarrassing themselves before the world. Before unbelievers. Before other religions. Making a caricature of themselves. Allowing themselves to be overtaken by lust and, and ambition and greed. All of us want Nigeria to be better, including myself. I want a better Nigeria. 
I want a great Nigeria. I want us to have the best of, of government. I want us to have development. I desire it so greatly. But it can never be the kingdom of God. It can never be. It can never be the kingdom of God. It is still the kingdom of men. It is still operated by men. And anything that men do can never be perfect. I'm teaching here. Anything that men are involved, anything that it is orchestrated by men within the within the, 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 the within the within the the boundaries of men, it can never be perfect. I have a reason why I'm talking like this. Somebody even said that if Tinibu becomes president, we should amputate his leg. He said, amputate my leg. We are looking for him. <laughs> Somebody even says he's a prophet. If Tinibu becomes president of Nigeria, there is no God in heaven. Look at that, that charlatan. That's a charlatan. That's what? A charlatan. Some churches, even pastors, stood on the pulpit and said, vote for this man. This man is the will of God. Let's fast and pray. How can a pastor be partisan? The pulpit is not a place for politics. The pulpit is a place. It is the pillar and the ground of the truth of the gospel. You don't use your pulpit except you don't know what the gospel is. And I don't blame them. Many of them don't know what the gospel is. They don't know what the gospel is. In Jesus' time, let's follow Jesus' example. In Jesus' time, there was oppression. There was no perfect government. And yet Jesus never said anything about government. Not one statement. The apostles lived under oppressive governments. Yet none of them said anything. Not even this. Talk about prophesy. None of them. Look at Matthew 2.16. Let me help you a bit. Matthew chapter 2 verse 16. Pay attention because you are power citizens. You cannot be like others. I'm your pastor. You must know the truth. Then he wrote, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, this is after Jesus is born, honey, was exceeding wrath and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and in all the coasts thereof from two years old and under according to the time which he had and inquired of the wise men. What kind of government is this? Tyranny. Tyranny. Jesus was born under tyrants. Where a king can just stand up and say, kill all the children in this nation from two years down and massacre. Nobody says a thing. That's the government under which Jesus was born and yet Jesus said nothing. That's instructive. Jesus was on earth, already matured, has grown under the ministry of John the Baptist. Yet, the moment John the Baptist said he will increase, I decrease. John the Baptist started making noise against government. They arrested him and put him in prison. Jesus said nothing. Jesus said nothing. John was in prison. Jesus said nothing. Because, because the early government is not Jesus' kingdom. He said nothing. John became so frustrated that John the Baptist said they should go and ask Jesus. Is he the real one or they should look for another because he can't understand how Jesus will know he's in prison and he's not doing anything to free him. Jesus performed miracles. Honey, Jesus performed miracles. Why didn't Jesus use the miracle power to open the prison? He performed miracles. He said, go and tell John what you have seen and what you have heard. The lame walk, blind eyes are open. That is how John stayed there till they cut off his neck and gave a small girl. Jesus said nothing. That's instructive. That is instructive. He said nothing. That is why in Luke chapter 24, the disciples said, we thought Jesus was the one that will free us from the tyranny of Herod. We thought Jesus would restore political power. That is what they thought. And that's why many Christians are thinking today. That's what many pastors are thinking today. They are thinking that a particular man will become governor or president and free us and give us the 
kind of prosperity that we want. They thought Jesus came to restore political power. Look at Luke chapter 24 verse 19. Luke 24 verse 19. And he said unto them, what things? And they said unto him, concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty indeed, and the word before God and all the people. Next verse. And how the chief priests and rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. Next verse. But we trusted. We trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. The only person that was our hope to free us and collect government and share offices for us in government. They have arrested him and he cannot free himself. Yea, and certain of the women also of our company made us astonished, which were earlier the sepulchre. Next verse. Next verse. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. Next verse. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulchre and found it even so as the women had said, but him they saw not. Next verse. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Fools! A preacher that doesn't know that the Politics and government in this world is not the kingdom of God, is a fool of oh, fools. Jesus said that. Jesus said that. I'm teaching good here. I have no apology for all those charlatans. None whatsoever. In fact, they will get it from me very hot. They will get it very hot. Just wait. I just they bring them. Are just they bring them today. Because this nonsense must stop. Say with me, this nonsense must stop. In Acts chapter 1 verse 5, the disciples, even after Jesus told them, this is not what I came for, they still didn't understand. In Acts chapter 1 verse 5, see what they were still saying. To show you the mindset that needs to be corrected. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Next verse. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? They still wanted to seize government. They still wanted to seize power. They still wanted to fight for political relevance. They thought that not, not you know, natural government is the kingdom of God. Just like many people think. We will take over Asherah. We will take over government house. We will take over all the positions. The church must take over. Jesus never preached a takeover message. He never did. And I can show you from scripture. If you have not been schooled well, that's why you're in power city. So you don't follow people and just be em embarrassing yourself and praying useless prayers. Useless prayers. Useless prayers. Prophesy nonsense. Nonsensical prophecies. The only saint in any man who prophesied those useless things should do now is to apologize and shut up. Do all. American preachers, after they do not trump it, they all apologize and shut up. They apologize and shut up. And if your pastor did it and doesn't apologize, that tells you something about your pastor. Very confused theology. Look at Deuteronomy 18. What the Bible says about a man who prophesies and it doesn't happen. Deuteronomy 18. Verse 15. Why are you laughing? I just they bring up. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me, unto whom, unto him you shall hearken. Next verse. According to all that thou desirest of the Lord thy God in Horeb, in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire any more that I die not. For time, verse 20. For time, verse 20. 
but the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. Next verse. And if thou say in thy heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken? Next verse. When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. But the prophet has spoken it presumptuously. Thou shalt not be afraid of him. Fear him not. Rebuke him the way I'm rebuking him. He cannot do anything. I just bring up. If a prophet said Tinibu will not win election, don't fear him again. If a prophet said seven days after his sworn in, disaster will happen. Seven days have passed. Fear him not. Prophet Prenuas. It's time to clean up all this rubbish and stop destroying people's faith in God and stop destroying people's confidence in God. Look at Ezekiel. Ezekiel. Ezekiel 13 22. I didn't come here to play. Ezekiel 13 22. Because with lies you have made the heart of the righteous sad. You've lied. You've made it look like God has died. You've made it look like there is no God. How can you stand before people openly and say, Thus says the Lord. Buhari will not complete his tenor. He will die in office. Osibanjo will take over. Buhari finished and went home a young boy. And you still have mouth to talk? You know the fear? He said, with lies, you have made the heart of the righteous. You have destroyed people's faith in God. You have destroyed people's confidence. You have made it look like God is a joke. Whom I have not made sad and strengthened the hands of the wicked that he should not return from his wicked way by promising him life. Next verse. Therefore, you shall see no more vanity nor divine divinations. For I will deliver my people out of your hand and you shall know that I am the Lord. We declare right now all the people that are bound in such churches and in such shrines, they are released right now. God will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Kadaba. First Timothy 6 10. I'm almost done. I will enter some serious things in the next service. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Which, while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Some of those prophecies are coming out of greed and out of love of money. They think when they say it and it happens, more, more people will follow them than they will collect money. It's coming out of greed. And because of that, they have, they have pierced themselves with sorrow. They have disappointed people's hope in God. 2 Timothy 2, 15 to 18. 2 Timothy 2, 15 to 18. Let the Bible talk to them. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Next verse. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Next verse. And their word will eat as though a canker, of whom is Hymnios and Philetus, who concerning the truth of earth, saying, that the resurrection is past already. And because of that nonsense, they have overthrown the faith of some. Some of these charlatans have overthrown a lot of people's faith. They have eroded people's confidence by saying what God didn't say. 
by prophesying in the name of God. Prophet what? In the name of who? <laughs> Paul made it clear in Romans 14, 17. Very clear. Paul made it very clear. Agabadagaya. He says, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy. Where? In the Holy Ghost. So wh where is the kingdom of God? In the Holy Ghost. The kingdom of God is not in Asarok. The kingdom of God is not in a quiet hilltop mansion. The kingdom of God is in the Holy Ghost. It's a spiritual kingdom. It's not PDP. It's not APC. And it's not LP. LUP. No. It's none of that. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, joy. Where? In the Holy Ghost. I'm teaching good here. Dr. Damina, are you saying we shouldn't vote? No, you're not hearing. You vote as a Nigerian, not as a Christian. You vote as a Nigerian. It is your civic right as a citizen of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to vote for a candidate you believe in. But it is not in your power to determine whether he wins or not. It's in your power to vote. But it's not in your power to determine whether he wins or not. Because there's a constitutional process. There's a constitutional process. There's a constitutional process. But for the kingdom of God, there's no constitution on earth that governs it. It is governed by God himself. I'm teaching good. Pay attention. Pay attention. Pay attention. We have moved from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. So there's a difference. Look at Ephesians chapter 3, I mean chapter 2 verse 2. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 2. Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience. Next verse. So there's a spirit at work in the world. Among whom also we all had our conversation in time past in the lust of our flesh. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. The world system oppressed by the flesh, by lust. By flesh and by lust. That's how the world system operates. That's why you vote for political leaders. They go in there and they represent their interest first before your interest. You can do nothing about it. That's how it is all over the world. Because it's not the kingdom of God. It is themselves first. Before you. That's the way the, the, the system works. Why does he run for a political office? A personal ambition. Not a divine vision. A personal ambition. I want to rule you people. That's my ambition. He gathers people and convinces them. The voting he goes in there and oppresses. Of course, it's all he oppresses. It's a kingdom of the. It's a kingdom of the world. It's, all, it's ruled by oppression. It's by force. They tell you clean your compound on Saturday. Clean your compound so you can be clean. Then they give you tax force. Tax force on sanitation. I, I thought cleaning my compound is supposed to be willingly. Now, Lyo, there's tax force. Why is the kingdom of this world? The kingdom of this world is oppressive. It's subjective. It subjects people. Only the kingdom of God allows you to make the choice. That's why God doesn't force anybody to be saved. He allows men to decide. But in government, if they tell you move and you don't move, they will move you. Why do they have law enforcement officers to enforce the law? If the governor is coming and his expert riders are in front and they do you like this and you don't like this, they will do you like this. It's by force. I'm teaching too good this morning. Jesus said my kingdom is not of this world. 
John 6, 15. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm teaching real good. John 6, 15. When Jesus therefore perceived that they will come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again into a mountain, himself alone. They were going to make Jesus president. He ran away. Why did he run away? My kingdom is not of this world. So don't look for the will of God in the presidency or in the government office. What they are there to do is they are there to carry out the policies of government. They are there to carry out what? The policies of government that were determined by people in government. Your governor is not there to get people born again. Did you vote your governor to get people born again? He's there to do business for Aquaibom, to make money for Aquaibom, to provide jobs for Aquaibom, to make sure the poor are taken care of, and to protect the territorial integrity of Aquaibom state. True or false? That's why he's there. He's not there to get you born again. We are the ones to get you born again. And we're doing our work. Glory to God. It is we that will get you born again. The governor didn't go there to, 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 to uphold the will of God. He went there to do the will of the people. Eh? Eh? Tinibu has moved to Asorok to do the will of God. The will of who? Nigerians. That's why Bireli came and he said, Oil subsidy. <laughs> Oil subsidy removed. The Labour Party said no. I mean Labour Labour Union, sorry. Labour Party, Labour Union. <laughs> Whichever of them. <laughs> they said no, no, we're going on strike. We're going on strike. Then government now say, okay, come, come, come. Let's negotiate. That's not the will of God. That is the will of the people. You must know the difference. Don't go and die trying to make somebody a governor and be disappointed that your candidate didn't win. It is a contest. In a contest, there's a loser and a winner. Deal with that. Even in football, when your club loses, it pains you, true or false. Because it's a contest, it's competition. God is not involved in competition. Once anything is competition, God is outside. Politics is competitive. God is not there. If God is in something, there's no competition. God will say, you, case close. But once there's competition, it's no more God, it's men. I'm teaching good though. Hear me well before four years from now. You know what will happen in four years time? I want to close. I should push on. To where? <laughs> where are we pushing to? John 8, 36 as I close. <laughs> Only push on. <laughs> John 18, 36. Everybody read together with me. John 18, 36. Not 8. John chapter 18, verse 36. Can we all read together? Everybody, like a mass choir in this church. Stand on your feet. Let's read it very loud. Let's read together like a mass choir in this church. Everybody. John chapter 18, verse number 36. One, two, go. Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Is that clear? Yes. It's not the kingdom of God. So don't let yourself be, be troubled. Let your heart not be broken. Do we pray for government? You will find out the kind of prayer we pray for them in the next service. You'll find out how do we pray for them. You'll find out so... How does God get involved with government? I will show you from scripture. So you understand. So that you can benefit well from Pastor Umoino's government 
I'm from Tinibu's government. Let me tell you, you will benefit from it. Yeah. If you like, don't say amen. Don't be looking at me. You will benefit from it. <laughs> I say you will benefit from it. Amen. Say because I'm in Nigeria, I will, I will benefit much more. Much. I will be led by the Spirit. Yes. I will make informed choices and informed decisions. I will benefit from this government. We hope you've been blessed by this message. And as you've been blessed, we want you to bless others by sharing this message abroad. If you're new here, can you don't leave without hitting on that subscribe button for us. Hit on that notification bell. Like and then comment in the comment section. We'll see you again on the next one. Stay tuned.